the, 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 the second uh, part, as we said, of this uh, lecture is the field tests. Uh, the field tests, it, uh, uh, these are tests that are done on site at the required depth. The first test that is very, very known here in Egypt is the, called the standard penetration test or the SPT or the N value test or اختبار الدقات. These are the names that are used on site. It mean, they, they all mean the same. When we describe it, you will know that this, these are all parts of the tests. Standard penetration test, it means that it is a penetration test for the soil, but it is standard. Standard in terms of energy, of, the, of penetrating the soil, standard in, in terms of dimensions, standard of, in terms of everything. So that once I do this test in a place and I get a number, and I do the, the same test in another place and I get a better number, then the soil is better. It's standard in this sense. So, suppose you have a borehole here, and you reach this uh, level. Once you reach this level, then you need to investigate this level. You, you tell me that I need to know the, the, what is the quality of the ground here. I will tell you, then I will stop. I will connect my equipment so that I will take this test. Uh, what will happen? This is a tube, empty from uh, inside. I put it on the bottom of, the, uh, of my hole, and I take this rod outside. I take this uh, uh, weight, it's a standard weight, that falls from a standard height. So standard weight falling from standard height means standard energy. It's the same amount of energy. So this energy will hit the rod. Once it hits the rod, the tube inside the soil will, will penetrate. So each time it falls, it penetrates a bit. And then another time, penetrates another bit. I need it to penetrate 15 centimeter. So what I do, this is the surface of the ground. I put a mark here on the tube, on the rod. And then I put another mark on top of it, 15 centimeters. And then I put another mark on top of it, another 15 centimeters. And then I put another mark, 15 centimeters. So I have 15, 15, 15, it's 45 centimeters. Just a line showing a mark. Then I start pushing, uh, no, no, hammering my equipment. Once I, f the first hit, it will go a bit. The second hit, it will go a bit, a bit, a bit, till the first line reaches the ground. Once it reaches the ground, then it means that it has already penetrated 15 centimeters. I record the number of hits, how many hit, how many blow. Suppose it is 10 blows, then I write N1 equal 10. It means that the number, uh, the N value of this test, the first N value is 10. <coughs> and then I continue again till I uh, finish the first, the second 15 meters. And then I will get a number. Suppose it is 20. I record N2 equal 20. And then I repeat for the last section and suppose it says 25. So I have 10, 20, 25. The first one is 10. By the way, I intended to say that the number is a little bit increasing. Why it is increasing? Because usually the soil increases the, as much as you go below. But the first 15 meters are very close. They are the first 15 meters below the drilling itself, the, below the, 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 the bottom of the hole. The, 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 the hole was drilled using a machine. 
And this machine was disturbing the soil. It was making vibrations and it was making lots of disturbance. And maybe part of the sides of the soil fall on the, uh, on the bottom. So I am not sure of the first 15 meters that they are very accurate. So I just discard them. So the first number, which is 10, I will discard this number. Then I will end up having 20 and 25. These are the, the two other numbers that I have. I add them together, uh, uh, 20 plus 25, it's 45. Then I tell you that the result of this experiment is uh, 45. 20 plus 25. Of course, 20 or 25, this, these are just numbers. Uh, you, you can uh, use any other numbers uh, that, that way. So uh, what, what I have, you, what you should know is that you have uh, N1. I will, uh, maybe, maybe I will add it or you add it to, 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 to this slide. Uh, remind me to add it. I, I, I need it written because it is Im important that you will end up with this, uh, in this uh, test with three numbers. N1, which is the number of blows for the first 15 meter. N2 for the second 15 meter. N3 for the third uh, 15 meters. N1 will be discarded. N2 and N3 will be added together to get the N value of this test. So this is the, te the, this is the value of the test. So if I tell you that my soil has an N value of 45, and you tell me there is another soil that has an N value of 25, which is better? Which is stronger? The one with 25 or the one with 45? 45. Yes, because it needed many blows to penetrate. You cannot penetrate it except if you put a lot of no. Suppose that I start blowing one, two, three, four, five. I reach 50 blows and I did not reach the 15 centimeters in any stage. In this case, I say that this soil has reached refusal and I say I either tell you that the, the n value is r which is refusal or I give you the number but I put a maximum value 50 50 it means that this is the maximum value I cannot I cannot have a soil more than 50 blues or the, the number should not in, be more than 50 This is, uh, yeah, no, no, it, it is written. I, I've, I've written it here. Here it is. The, the, these, this is the test procedure. So the test procedure is exactly what, what, what we have said. This is N1, this is N2, this is N3 for each 15 centimeters and so on. And then finally, N30 is N2 plus uh, N3. This is exactly what I wanted to add. It is already added. This is uh, yeah, yeah, just a shape of, uh, of a tripod carrying this equipment in case you want to do it once at a special depth. But usually this uh, uh, equipment is added to the drilling machine itself. So it is part of the drilling machine and it is, uh, yeah, yeah, you just press something on the machine so, and, and the weight falls on the rod and, and so on and it continues. What is good about this test is that the tube that we are going to push in the ground is hollow from inside. So once it, it comes out, I take it, I find a piece of sample in it, I take it, it is a very good sample because it is sample that was taken reaching a depth of 45 meters below my uh, hole. So it is, it is a very good sample. But of course, it is very good in terms of material. The material is very good. But in terms of uh, compactness, no, it, it is very compacted compared to uh, the, the, the normal uh, soil. So I, but the, the compaction I already measured from the number of blows. During testing, you told me that the N value is 45. It means it is very good. If it is uh, 10, I will tell you, no, it is very, very, very soft soil. So, so yani, 
I don't need from the, 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 the part of the strength, I take it from the numbers. The part of the material, I take it from the sample inside. So I now have everything. I don't need anything else. Another test is called the cone penetration test. It is similar to the CPT with the following differences. The other was stand, uh, it is uh, uh, the, the uh, I was hammering or blowing the rod. In this case, I'm just pushing. So it is a static load in case of the cone penetration test. I'll just show you uh, the shape of it. This is the shape of it. Here is a, a tube, and this tube, using this machine that is inside this van, they push the tube inside the ground. And once they push the tube inside the ground, they measure few things that relates to the friction between the tube and the ground and the resistance the tube tip is having with the ground. Because if you push something in the ground, it is, it is resting on the ground and in the same time it is having friction with the sides of the ground. So it measures both and it gives me the number directly because this equipment is new, it is computerized, uh, the, 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 the data, you have uh, no equipment to, for data acquisition to, 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 to take this data and give you just uh, uh, charts for everything. So it gives you directly what you have. If you are penetrating a soft soil, then it will penetrate quickly. And then you go into a, a stiff soil, it will, uh, uh, the speed will be decreased, decreased, and so on. So uh, uh, based on the force you are, you, uh, you are using, the speed of penetration, you can, uh, or the equipment can, uh, give me data related to the uh, strength of the material. Of course, this uh, equipment cannot, or this, this test cannot be used in case of having uh, gravel or in case of having boulders because you are just pushing something and you find on uh, uh, in front of it something preventing it from moving it will not move and in the it will give you a false idea because it will tell you the ground is very strong but it is not strong it's just a, a, a boulder in front of your uh, tip so this, this, it's, not, it's not what we uh, need. So this is a very good test for a special type of, uh, of ground, which is a, a clay, silt, soft soil. Any, any soft soil, this is very, very good for, for it. Uh, but the other one was for sand. SPT was very good for sand. This is very good for clay. So now we know two tests, one for sand and one for clay. Uh, the, 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 the other, uh, another test is called a plate loading test. A plate loading test, let's see a, a photo of it. This is a plate on the ground. Uh, by the way, uh, uh, what is the shape of our fo any foundation? It's a plate. Any foundation is a plate. It's either uh, rectangle, square, maybe circle. Why not a circular foundation? I can, I can construct a circular foundation. So this circular plate resembles a circular foundation. For any foundation, I have a column on top that brings load to the foundation. I bring here a hydraulic jet. I put it on the, on the plate. This hydraulic jet presses down on the plate and presses up. When you add, when you start jacking, the hydraulic jet is the correct of the Arabic. Yeah. So, so you, you, use the, you use it with your, in your car. So any hydraulic jet, once you start operating it, it starts to exert pressure up and down and it will pushes it will push the 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 the, uh, the, the smaller weight 
uh, in case of cars, your car is uh, is not that heavy compared to the ground. So it it uh, on the ground it uh, it is very stiff. So it will stay in place, but it will push your car up. But in 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 this case, we bring something that very is very very strong. It cannot move. Sometimes in some sites, instead of bringing very very uh, expensive uh, equipment or, or uh, arrangement, they bring a truck. They fill the truck with the loads, uh, maybe maybe sand, gravel, anything, and they put it on top of the experiment. And they put this uh, jack below it. So once the, the, you start operating this jack, the jack pushes the, the, the truck, but the truck is very, very heavy. It cannot push the, the truck. So what happens? It pushes below. It pushes the plate to the ground. So this is exactly like a circular foundation with a column. This is the column, and this is the circular foundation. What do I need? I, I need to know the load, and I need to know the settlement. If I, if I know the load and the settlement, then I know everything about the behavior of this foundation. The load, I know it because I am the one exerting this pressure. I am the one operating this uh, hydraulic jack. So I know the stress, and I can transfer the stress into load or use it as a stress. And in the same time, I know I can uh, measure the settlement that will happen to this plate. These three points measure the settlement <coughs> of the plate. I take the average because it's, it's a plate. So I take the average of the three. Then this is the settlement of the plate. So I know the settlement. I know the load. Load divided by... Uh, load and settlement, then I have the E modulus of the soil. So I can use the E modulus of the soil. Uh, th th this is uh, 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 this uh, first, th th this is the, the equipment and, and the shape of it. This is the truck in case of using the truck as, as uh, uh, something heavy on top of it. Uh, last thing to end this uh, lecture is uh, uh, geophysical investigation. Uh, uh, we, we have said many types of, uh, of uh, uh, ways to investigate the site. The last type is related to something called geophysical. What is a geophysical uh, uh, investigation? A geophysical investigation is similar to, uh, uh, say, Go, uh, I have a problem with my stomach, I go to the, do the doctor, they tell me go and make an ultrasound, sonar. And they make this ultrasound and uh, they, they see what is inside my body. So here is exactly what they do. They see, they try to see what is below the ground using waves. So there are many ways to uh, uh, investigate this, it's either seismic wave, electric uh, resistivity, electric uh, current, uh, or sometimes they use uh, something called ground penetration radar. This ground penetration radar is exactly similar to the sonar that we, we, we make uh, to our body. The idea is what? Is the idea is that I have a source, I start emitting a wave. This wave will start propagating in the ground. Once it reaches something different, maybe a stronger ground or water table or uh, the end of the sand and the start of the uh, rock, something different, part of the wave is reflected. Once it is reflected, I measure it here <coughs> or I receive it here. Once I receive it by uh, methods of analysis, I can interpret this into saying that starting from here to here, I have a layer of this material, of, of, of course, based on the velocity of the, uh, of the wave inside, inside this layer. <coughs> uh, 
so I can say that I have this layer that is made of a material that is very strong or very uh, weak. Its depth is so and so, and I start to give you data about this uh, layer. <coughs> I can do this for a multi-layer. If I have multi-layer, then I have the source. Part of the wave will be uh, uh, reflected on the first surface, then another part on the second, another part on the third, and so on. Uh, there are people who are experienced in this, similar to the people who are experienced in the ultrasound, in the medical uh, profession. So they can transfer these data, uh, the, these waves into the data that we need. They can tell us that below this ground there are layers. Uh, the first layer is, is, of course, they cannot give us a, a specific name. They cannot give, t tell us that this is silty sand. But they will tell us that you have a material that has a property of so and so. It will help in uh, uh, setting the boundaries between uh, layers. It may not give us uh, the exact name of the, of the layer. That's why we always say that we need these, exper uh, these tests plus boreholes. So if I have boreholes and I have this, it means that I have many things. Why? Because I have one borehole here and another borehole maybe 50 meters away. The 50 meters in between will be studied by this method. So I can have a full picture of the whole ground. I can divide my site into sections and I can take readings all over my uh, land. So there are, uh, 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 of course, th th this is not very important for us, but you need to know that th this, there is something called the reflected wave and the refracted wave. Reflected is the wave that is uh, completely uh, changed, uh, uh, I mean reflected uh, uh, from down to, 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 to up again. A refracted means that it just, the angle of it is changed. Uh, the, I have a wave going with an angle of 60. Once it reached another uh, layer, the, the angle instead of being 60, it became 75. So why 75? Because it's in a new material. So the, there are many types of wave. We are not expert in this, but we have to know the minimum idea that they are using waves, sending them, receiving them, and based on the way that they are received based on being reflected waves, refracted waves, or whatever. Finally, they can, and the velocity of the wave, they can tell us uh, what are these, the properties of the material uh, below us. Once we find, we finish this, we put, we put all of this in a geotechnical report. Uh, just two pages to finish. What is a geotechnical report? I've, I've been discussing a site investigation. I, in this site investigation, I did boreholes, test pits, uh, uh, SPT test, uh, CPT test, many things I have done. Uh, all of this is in my mind, but I, I don't have anything how I'm going to tell people what I, what I have done. Then I, may, I, I need to prepare a report. In this report, I will put first an introduction telling them that this is the report for the project so and so at this location. I give all the, 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 the data concerning the project itself and the site. And then I start in number two, start to describing uh, the site investigation program. What, what did I use? I, I, I made uh, 10 boreholes or 20 boreholes. I made them to a depth of 20 meters or to 40 meters. Uh, I used plus uh, boreholes, plus test pits, or I, uh, I, I used uh, electric res uh, resistivity or uh, these all uh, these methods, seismic waves, and, and and so on. I have to give them all the data that I have, the, the name, the name of the, all the, the the methods that I have adopted then this is my site investigation program. Third thing that is important to include is the results and discussion. 
What, what was the result? I got uh, uh, an SPT of uh, 25 for a layer and an SPT of 45 for another layer. It means that this 45 is more, so this is stronger than this. So I have to put the results and put my discussion on this results. Finally, I put conclusion and recommendation. I am the one who is expert in the investigation, so I, uh, it's not enough to give them the data. You have to give them the data and to tell them what to do. So you are telling uh, what do they want to do? They want to do uh, to construct uh, uh, foundations. So you have to tell them what is the shape of the soil below the ground? How many layers? What are the types of these layers? So soil profile, which means the layering of the soil, and foundation level. What is the best foundation level? Should I take the foundation at which depth to, to, to rest on this layer? Or no, if this layer is not very good, just remove it and let's rest on the, the, the layer below it. So soil profile and foundation level. Next is foundation type and bearing capacity. Are you going to tell them to use shallow foundation or to use deep foundation? Maybe the soil is very bad and you cannot use shallow foundation, so uh, deep foundation is, is better. And in any case, you should tell them the, the bearing capacity. How much is the bearing capacity of the soil or how much is the bearing capacity of the piles that are the deep foundation that you are going to put? Soil improvement, if any, maybe you are going to do some soil improvement. You, 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 you are going to compact the soil to be better or to add something to the soil to be better. Uh, soil properties of various layers. Each layer, what is the parameters that you have got from after doing the tests? Uh, safe slopes uh, of cut and fill in case you are going to, to do some cuts, cutting or filling in the ground, then what are the safe slopes? Anything, anything related to construction, you have to give it any recommendation that makes your uh, construction better, you have to say it here in this report. Last thing you put is an appendix. You put everything you used and you did not mention here. In case you have something uh, that, that, that was used, just put it in an appendix so you have all the data. It's like a research that you are giving to the structural engineer. Uh, this ends up our uh, lecture for uh, site investigation. Uh, I hope uh, you understood it. If anything you do not understand, please uh, let me know. Thank you.